in all things have no preferences. This is not some things and a few things or a set of things in all things. Today I'm in nature, so you're going to hear some of my bird friends just making some noise in the background. I always feel a lot more inspired when I'm here because I've got the trees here, I've got a pond right in front of me. I feel a lot more free when I'm talking in this environment. But back to Musashi's words, they remind me a lot of the teachings of the Roman Emperor Marcus Aurelius, the meditations. In all things we should willingly give ourselves up to Clotho, allowing her to spin us into whatever threads she pleases. Now who is Clotho? Clotho is a mythological figure. She is the youngest of the three fates of Moirai, who spins the thread of human life. Now the other two, uh, the one draws out the thread and the other cuts the thread. I don't really believe in it, but I'm able to take away the lesson from it. It is giving yourself up to your destiny. You have a certain set of characteristics that you might be physically superior in football. So a Cristiano Ronaldo, for example, we can look at someone like him as having dedicated his full time and attention to perfecting this one craft and becoming truly world class. But if you look at the way that he's allocated his hours and the way that he's used his days, you cannot blame him if he's not proficiently versed in all these other topics because he has maxed out on this thing which has best served his skills and it's worked out very well. And this is what is meant by giving yourself over to your fate. In the beginning, it never looks pretty. It never makes sense. You have all these voices, specifically your family and your friends and whoever, people who think they're doing or they're giving their best to you by telling you what they think you should do. And when you give into this, you build resentment both towards yourself and towards them for not being authentic. And so Musashi tells us that in all things we should have no preference. And having no preference, it allows you to make the hard decisions. If you have no preference towards what your teachers tell you, what your friends tell you, what your parents tell you, what it does is create a platform from which you can objectively make a decision. Where do my strengths lie? Where am I best suited to be able to give the fullest of my gifts? And that decision might manifest itself completely opposite to what all these loving people are telling you. Having no preference is a very difficult thing because it does not eliminate the need for you to be disciplined, to make a plan, to analyze things. That judgment part of your brain evaluate between what is veritably good and what is not. Having a preference is coming into something with a predefined idea of how things should go. Preferences, they hinder us, right? They blind us to being able to see the truth behind things. You might have a preference for a particular kind of career that you think is what you should do because this is what is hot right now because there's a lot of money. So you have a preference for that, not because this is what you're going to be good at or what you're going to excel at, but because this is what is paying the highest at this point in time and therefore you think you should go for that. You might be somebody whose poetry is just out of this world. But you're not going to know until you, one, apply yourself, two, evaluate how you perform once you've applied yourself, and three, decide whether you want to keep applying yourself until you not only become good, until you not only become proficient, but until you become world class. And having no preference is also going to help you when things become difficult. You face failure, right? You start a company, things seem to be going well, and then your company just collapses. You had a preference for success, but perhaps that success might have come too early. And I've seen this with a lot of younger men who achieve early success. It blinds you from that work that you need to do on your character and improve. And some of the most successful people, if you're diligent into going deeper into their story, you realize that they've met a lot of setbacks and failures early on. But when you don't have a preference for success, you can evaluate it and step back and think, I really put a lot of effort and time and resources into this thing. Why did it fail? Because if it matters that much to you, you're going to keep going. Because your preference was not on succeeding. Your preference 
was not on doing well. You wanted to apply yourself and you wanted to see where this is going to go. This goes back to what Marcus Aurelius says. Give yourself willingly to that force that is going to guide you because multiple failures might just be the best thing for you. It might allow you to go deeper than the surface level of who you are and you dig and discover some things that you would not have discovered if things just went your way from day one. The one thing I keep telling a lot of my clients, a lot of my peers, a lot of my friends who are going through just this turmoil of emotions is let it happen. Don't swim against the current. Let it happen. Go through it. Go through the darkness, right? Go through the pain. Feel it. Because there's so many rules that are defined by your particular society, your particular uh, community, that you have to look at them as well without a particular preference and ask yourself, is this thing good? Is me being emotionally repressive of what I'm feeling, is that good for me? And not having a preference in a very paradoxical way, it prioritizes you. Because a lot of the preferences you have, if you really observe them and really broke them down, they're not yours. These are preferences that you inherited from your parents. These are preferences that you inherited from your friends. These are preferences that you inherited from your social group. These are preferences you inherited from your culture. But what do you want, right? And this comes again to the previous talk we had of being free from desire, right? So now you've got desire on the one hand, You've got lust on the other hand. You've got love on the other hand. Now you've got preference. Like the, these, these forces, we keep shedding layer after layer because you, the real you, the one who is, right, the I am, the deeper you go, the more you realize that you don't know him. In my own personal example, it took me 29 years to figure out that I wanted to make music. So I went the corporate route and I did a whole bunch of other things that I believed I wanted to do only to discover that these are not things I wanted to do. These are things I did because I wanted to please the people around me. And when I was able to let go of these preferences, when I was able to be free of these desires and I was able to make a decision based on my vocational uh, predispositions, when I was able to make a decision based on the natural endowments of skill and talent and what I'm able to apply myself to and get into flow more regularly, I realized that I had a more creative bent than I did an analytical and scientific. And I had spent so much time applying myself analytically and scientifically that the joy I felt for the creative element of life I could not describe in words. I still cannot describe in words. It fuels that spark of life within me. And if I have to go through another transformation, I will follow it not because this has become a preference of mine, but because life is so much more beautiful when you allow yourself to let go. And letting go is not an irresponsible, like YOLO, you only live once type of thing. Letting go is really letting life happen. Becoming like you were when you were in the womb, right? You didn't have any control, but there was this force that was forming your limbs, forming your organs, forming you, protecting you, feeding you. And if you allow yourself to really grow, then you're going to realize that the challenges and adversities are just as good and necessary for you as the victories and successes. The negative emotions and the bad feelings are just as wonderful as the ecstasy and the highs of life. Losing is just as powerful to your psyche as gaining. Duality of reality is something that you cannot experience if you're always having a preference for the one side. Let both sides take effect in your life and apply yourself fully. The only way you can apply yourself fully is if you're like that man who's flying. You're not thinking about the forces that are making you fly. You're not thinking about how it is you're negating the effects of gravity. You're just flying. Let yourself fly. This is what Musashi is saying. Let go of all these predefined notions of what is and let yourself 
fly.